What's up, fam? What's up? I once was on a plane thinking about the hustle of getting a movie onto the entertainment screen on the back of the plane seat. Damn. This episode, we are joined by director Hans Masoy of the local film Brown Boys, who breaks down the blessings and challenges he faced on his project. Also joining him at the pillar table, we are lucky to have fellow cast member Johnny Agustino, as well as our guest host, Mr. Free Dees himself, the Uso Hamo King, Alpha Mayaba, Se Taco. There's a lot to unpack and learn from here, so pull up a seat, and if you're drinking, drink responsibly. And definitely don't drink and drive, keys down real talk. So enjoy these conversations, that will hopefully inspire and inform you on your own journey. Cheer, bro. My background on yourself, your journey to the film, and how how did you got, get into the into the game? And... Um, so, like, I I, I started um, first. Uh, I'm an actor, you know. So I've been acting since 2009. Um, I, I got into it. I I just went to uh, a um, drama school. Uh, you know, Pacific Performing Arts, Pacific Island Performing Arts, people, people yeah. you know, and um, in 2009. And then, you know, I've been acting ever since and, and sort of like in 2009 too, I made my, you know, I made a short film and sort of, I guess, you know, coming to the film is probably where uh, it's come out of like, okay, acting, acting, you know, and I felt like eventually, you know, I had to step out and make my own work, mm. you know, not just for me, but for my mates. You know, when you're at drama school, you got all the dreams, you know? Mm. It's like, suddenly, what are we gonna do? Like, with your boys, and you know, what are we gonna do? We're we gonna go to Hollywood, what are we gonna do? Um, and it was just me not wanting to give up on that dream, basically, you know? And it's like, okay, once I graduated, you know, so after BIPA, I went to uh, Unitech in 2012. Mm. Graduated from there, bachelor's and that. Uh, then I was trying to sort out what the next step was, you know. Even though I was doing all right, like um, getting the odd short film and being on TV and stuff, I was like, okay, well, well that, what, what was going to be next, man? Mm. Like, I'm always going to be, I think I, if I knew right away, it was like I was always going to be at the mercy of someone else, yeah. you know, uh, unless they write, you know, Samoan guy, 20 something. You know, this sort of build, you know, mm. I'm always at someone else's. So I was like, okay, I knew eventually I had to make, um, or, or know how to, you know, produce or, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. get into uh, other, you know, creating theatre pieces or short films or whatever. And so, long story short, you know, that's how Brown Boys come, come about, you know. It's, it's kind of like... How I've been explaining it to a lot of people is like, well, you know, the movie is kind of like, you know, me a few years back, you know, like, for example, I'm now 34 with a family and I was like, well, what coming to writing a film, you know, mm-hmm. instead of, OK, you know, um, going going after something, you know, that I knew that would have taken a little bit longer, like if I was going to do, for example, a Samoan, you know, pre-colonial story, like something yeah, I'm interested yeah, yeah. in, and that'll take 10 years probably, you know what I mean? It's the dream of many Samoan filmmakers, but I was like, well, <clears throat> what can I write now? And what, what can I, what's, what's a story that I can tell honestly, and also have, you know, have some, you know, some heart behind it, what can I do now? And it's like, well, I had to kind of revisit my life, basically, you know, it's like, ah, oh, well, even though I'm a family man now, I wasn't always yeah. this guy, you know, and I wasn't always, um, you know, calm and, you know, and responsible. Oh. And I was like, okay, well, you know, when you, story, you know, you guys are from the music industry and you know that like, a lot of it is storytelling. I said, well, the guy starts off here, yep. you know, this is my sort of when I was scribbling this stuff down. I was like, yeah, the guy starts off here and he ends off here. Yep. But at, along the way, you know, maybe he's learned something or somebody's learned something. You know? But I didn't want to sort of make it, um, how do I, what about being, I didn't want to be corny about it, you know, it's just like you said, real talk, something real, because again, you have to, I had to visit and say, well, uh, what kind of movie do I want to watch? Yeah. You know, I love, you know, having comedies and stuff like that. But for me, you know, I grew up on, you know, 
Al Pacino and Marlon Brando and you know, then, like um, I always wanted to get in like as an actor when I, when I found myself acting I was like so that's the kind of you know I wanted to be writing dramas so mm -hmm. like eventually I'll write a hardcore drama mm -hmm. one day um, but you know, I thought for my first film, I was like, well, maybe something lighter yeah. to sort of introduce myself into the, you know. So initially, Brown Boys was supposed to be a comedy, like yeah. a straight up comedy, yeah. But like I said, Fengale, my 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 um my influences, you start writing things, Fengale, go if you're mad or whatever, yeah. and end up to like, oh, now what drama? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Now it's tackling some real issues. All of a sudden, it's yeah. like, okay, well, these guys, you know, this. It's just like, for myself, when looking back at now, I didn't realize that at the time, you know, there's some stuff I was doing that's like, ah, yep. this is some some silly things you're doing here, Hans, you know? But you don't realize it until, you know, it's like, oh, you're holding your baby and you're going, maybe I should have not done that, you know? Mm -hmm. Or I wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, hopefully that's kind of explaining, you know, the, the heart behind what, what, why I made the film, yeah. you know, and also, I come from the act. I didn't want to be too fancy with my story as well. If you watch, you know, it's like, well, keep it simple, but also just have a little bit of, you know, just have heart and be real, be honest, and 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 people will take what they what they want to take from it. You know, that's kind of what I I wanted to achieve with the film. So, yeah. I mean, even on that level of production, obviously the you can have all the gear and all whatever, but it comes down to the personnel, the people, the cast. Like, how did the team get? Put together and how like, do you go about that? That's a, that's a good question. Also, I mean, I could tell a, a simple story, but still had layers, and you know, it was deep, you know, in different ways. And then I, I knew another strength was gonna be uh, I could get some good actors, you know, my boys basically. It's like um, instead of because in the industry right now, you know, or mostly anyway. I rock up to an audition and I see my boys all lining up for the same role, you know? It's like, oh, True. what's up, boys? <laughs> like, good luck, brother. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's yeah. what it's like. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was cool to have, you know, brown boys where all the all the boys were all playing different characters, you know, or different, you know, sort of archetypes, you know? Yeah. And each, each individual could do their own thing with it, you know, and show what they got, you know? And, and you get to see Arlingi, you know, and you get to see Tom. And everybody in there, Johnny, every year, like Johnny is fairly unknown, you know, right now, but I think he's a star, you know. I think all the all the guys yeah. that are coming up, you know, so um it was just giving them that opportunity and then uh, and this was the pitch. Oops. <laughs> you know. Get it Not enough money, brother. But if you come and jump on this movie, you know, it could you know, it could kick off your career. You could be in Hollywood, you know, or but not just that, it's like, well, it's a good role, you know? You can really show your talent if you bite the bullet, you know, in the pocket, but come and lend your, lend your, your talents to, to the story. We'll read the script first and see if you like it. And then, you know, if you, if you want to jump on, then that's us, you know? And I also, you know, now Johnny's coming to, he comes to collect basically every week now. It's like, shall we get your kuku o'clock at my house? Say, What's going on, man? Mm. Oh, what's going on, John? <laughs> Oh, no, it's out of food or uh, I said, oh, okay, yeah, brother. But that's how I think that's how we did most of the film. You know, it's like just on my word, you know, and then just making sure. And like right now, I'm still making sure that I keep those promises that I made. You know, and then and I think um, we achieved that. You know, like all the boys are still very grateful for for being a part of the film um, because it, in a way, it was it's kind of I didn't even see it to be honest. Like. It was kind of controversial, the film, you know. Yeah, like, I can see. Probably. Yeah, yeah, sure. And and I and I understand it now, you know, and I understand it like, um, yeah. So and that's that's a massive learning. That's massive learning, you know, for me and, and and the boys as well. But most of the most of the team, they were all stood by me, you know, and they all sort of. But that's what happens when you you tell the truth. Mm. You know, that's that was the kind of um, the general comment from the team, and I was like, so they well. Thank you guys, because you know you guys put put yourselves out there for me as well, and mm. I'm just grateful to to everybody. You know, mm. your, how was your experience on the whole mm. 
You stole my question, man. <laughs> <coughs> How was your experience, <laughs> mate? No, I'm all just like what Hans is saying. Eh? It's like, yeah, I'm in, man. I'm in. You know? So went away and um, got to meet up with the with the rest of the cast. And um, for me, being from Australia, it was the first time I've actually been in a room. And like you said, we're not actually auditioning against each other. We're actually working together. So that was like, whoa, okay. I'm going to learn a lot from each and every one of these, you know, guys because they all studied here in New Zealand, whereas yeah. um, I, I didn't, I don't really know much of the industry over so where here. Where did you study your acting? Um, Australia. Oh. So I was, I was over at um, Sydney, um, studying over there, and then moved down to Melbourne for a bit, um, and then decided to come back home mm -hmm. here and um, practice more. And then that's uh, bump, meeting Hans and bumping into one of our acting classes. Um, yeah, that's when I start to, you know, hang out more, get to know him a bit more. Hmm. Um, his style, I guess, yeah. I actually have a confession to make, brother. Yeah. When the, you know, after we spoke on, uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah. on, uh, uh, on the, one of the programs at the time when you guys yeah. were working on the film, I remember, um, you know, Arlingi at the time asking me to come down and sort of watch the film. Yeah. And um, and this is purely because I I listen to your story now and you're explaining it and now it yeah. sort of makes sense for me on how he went down that road. Yeah, yeah. So I've been away from New Zealand for for a long time, and when we came back, um, so you know, because I was asking about the film and yeah. you know, you guys were saying it was a sort of like a film for everyone. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I wanted to watch the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm one of those people that when I saw that film. Yeah. I thought to myself, uh, sorry, when I saw the trailer, yeah. I thought to myself, I'm going to save um, myself from seeing this film of Hans yeah. because I believe there's one he's going to make yeah. that's going to sing a tune to the story that I want to tell. Yeah. Mainly because, you know, I remember at the time I was asking you guys, you know, what it's about, yeah. who it's about. But yeah, when I saw it, yeah. it just represented to me a lot of um, what I would call liability stories. Yeah. And liability stories were mainly around that drinking culture, that hood culture, you know. And you guys were saying it's about you and your boys. I'm like, so you and your boys hang out every week and have a drink and sexualize women, right? Yeah. And so it was my fault. I judged from what I saw yeah. in the trailer. And it's because I didn't know you guys too. Yeah. And the stories that you tell in a film are stories that I'm trying to tell stories against it. Yeah. That it's a story of a past yeah. that we are now scholars because uh, yeah. for me, I always see stories where we um, we glorify the difficulties of a journey as liability stories, because those are the only ones we can tell that the world we live in yeah. justifies when they see us. Yeah. Just like being a rugby player, you know, mm -hmm. um, we are more prone to be professional rugby players than uh, one farm boy from Manawatu mm -hmm. because of the stereotype of society that we're in. I would like to see more films where we're all about the CEOs and we're running a 50,000 or $50 million company because that is a graduate story. So I want to apologize to you, uh, you know, keys down real talk, right? That I prejudged uh, oh, the man. story because it's, it, it's sort of what I saw <clears throat> without seeing the film. And I'm, I guess it, there's a film for people like me who make a judgment without seeing the real story. But it was because of that, you know, when I was watching it, it was like the drinking culture. Yeah. Um, and I thought, wow, man, that stuff still goes on today. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and when you guys said, oh, males brought me and my boys, I'm like, that's what you and your boys do today. Yeah. That's what me and my boys used to do back in 10 years ago. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. But hearing your stories now, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's awesome because you're justifying that, you know what, every generation has a different struggle that yeah. it's still new, but, but it's yeah. still a culture that is that it needs highlighting. Yeah. And just hearing your journey or story from who you were yeah. um, to who you are now, and that whole movie was about your self-discovery and where you are today, my Lord, man. Oh, so man. I, I, I got to apologize, man, up right nah, there. Man. You know? Oh, man. I'm grateful uh, for that also, and yeah. you know, thank you for that. I mean, you know, that real talk, like, sort of, um, and I, I think that's why I came, you know, because, um, you know, that way that people can, you know, can understand how I made the film, you yeah, know? Yeah, and it's yeah. also like, maybe they can see my artistry as well. You know yeah. what I mean? That, okay, 
And it's that whole thing of, like you said, trying to make it seem, because it's hard enough to, to like, try and tell a story like that, yeah. but then also, you know, here is the moral of the story, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And for me, I didn't want to, you know, just like those things bug me in films. Ah, oh, I saw that from a Marlo, you know? So it was just, and, um, and that's also, you know, I'm humbled by that, you know? And, um, and uh, you know, I'm grateful that we're sharing, sharing the table now, we're sharing the, you know, the space and, and we get to, um, and cause also other people can also, you know, find out about me and how I came about the story instead of it's just being a random, oh, it's a drinking, you know. I'll be honest with you, man. Of all the interviews that you've given about this movie, this is the most truest to the form of why you wrote the movie I've ever heard you talk about. So that's why I kind of felt shame right now sitting under this yeah. light because I was, I was very much mentally uh, judging you yeah. from what I saw. Yeah. And then now you're explaining it because, you know, when you always start something, you start off from when you know the best, right? Yeah. And so... Hearing that now makes yeah. me say, man, congratulations, because you literally put yourself. Yeah. Because yeah. now yeah. I know you didn't just write a script. You actually yeah. wrote the journey of when Hans was a kamakanki, uh, yeah. yeah. back in the day. <laughs> 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 you know? And now you're a parent now, and now you see better. And I bet you a lot of the stuff you did in that film, yeah. you would kill the guy who would have done it to you. Three your girls. Yeah. I've got three daughters, you know? So going back, like... Um, and when I wrote the script, I was just going to be, it's hard enough writing and then directing. I only just acted in it like a couple of weeks before, you know, because we had some boys pull out and I was like, oh man, you know, and then I had to tell my gang, I was like, well, you know, I want to play this guy, you know, and I was like, you know, and I had to go through, but again, it was just like, <clears throat> the story, I felt like the story needed to be told, you know, and just so we can, you know, see something, maybe learn something. Yeah. And if my execution was wrong, then no, you know, anybody out there, know that I, that was not my, I did my best. Used all my talent to try and tell a story, you know? And also, like I said, um, that I guess that would be the hope. Like you said, you know, graduate stories, like hopefully from these kind of stories, yeah. you know, we're at that, you know, next next few years from now, I was like, well, we're on a different level now, you know, hopefully. Um, like you said, also you're right, you're still right too. This movie, from what how it come out and how we made it, it will help me make other films, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was one of the big bonuses from making Brown Boys. Now people, okay, cool. I like, you know, not everyone's gonna love it, you know, like you said, like how it tackles women as well. Like I had to be real too, like it was painful. It was kind of like sad, sort of like, oh, is that what really was going on? Type of, you know, is that how it is? You know, but it's like, well, was that how it is though? Most, a lot of it is like that, you know, or was like that, you know, from, from that experience. Like, I don't know really, you know what I mean? I, I'm not know. judging. I mean, no. it's just the fact that yeah. how close to your real story no. is. It is very close. Like, I, it's it's sad to say, good. but. Uh, man, yeah. hey, man, thanks for that. Dude. No, thank you, brother. Thank so, Except my uh, apologies. Nah, nah, also. Nah, also. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. You know, yeah. I mean, we know how powerful art and music can be. And if you see it on the screen and you see yourself reflected back like that, there's some difficult characters in there. Yeah. That, but it's, it's close to home. So yeah. It's funny you say that, eh? Um, because most of the boys, they're all kind of inspired by, you know, I won't throw anybody under the bus, but they're all inspired by guys that I knew, you know? And one of the guys that was sort of, you know, based on Arlene's character, when I showed it to him, he goes to me, so that guy's a bit too much, man. I was like, hey, really? And I, I thought, well, he, he doesn't even touch the, the, you know, the guy and say, oh, bro, a bit too, too far, eh? I was like, oh, nah, that's cool, man. You really? He's like, nah, nah, yeah, but you know, some things in there, I was like, oh. But it's like, what you, you just said it, you know, you just need it on that head, like, just too much to sort of, oh, okay. Maybe, is that me? Or mm. this guy trying to tell me something, mm. you know? I didn't really want to do it like that, but yeah, I think some, you're going to find, um, you know, some people will, some people will find themselves in, in that, you know? And even, like, even the female characters too, like, <clears throat> um, what I wanted to do with the film too, like, girls, you know, in, in the time, that, you know, where it was inspired from, girls are just like boys in my, a lot of 
girls that I knew were kind of like doing the same. And I wanted to highlight that. Oh, yeah, I wanted to highlight that as well, you know, instead of uh, some, you know, that. <clears throat> and that's not to say that everybody, every, you know, woman is like that because there's so many beautiful Samoan Pacific Island women, respectable, you know. But I, I also had to put it out there as well. Like, yeah. they're not. They were giving it as much as the boys were giving it as well. well whether that's nice or not, I, I didn't. True. I didn't judge. You know, I like when I was writing. I was like, okay, that's kind of how it was. You know, like again, I'm not sure. 34 now. I'm not sure if the 20 somethings are doing that right now. I kind of don't want to have a look and have, have a see. But you know, um, John. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they're still doing that. Eh? They're still doing that these I days. No, no. I've got heaps of no, young siblings there, so yeah, I just find out for my younger siblings. They always keep me up to date. So yeah, it's still the um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's still the same out there, um, even with my own younger brothers and sisters. I think when they went to go and see the film, um, yeah, I think they saw a lot of just the way that we're actually growing up, you know, with mom, dad, and all the uncles. And they can see that it's, it's still going on now. So I think, um, yeah, it was real sort of hard. You know, it's kind of touching on the hard strings, I guess, for those guys to come actually see me act in something like this, especially with um, the message that the movie was actually showing. Uh, you asked, you know, how close was the character to me um, personally? Uh, I'll, probably, I'll probably say, you know, I, I think he got it pretty close. So, yeah. Sure. yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, that was, yeah, that was, that was a while ago, but yeah. That was, uh, that was the best one now. Now come back Um So when I was writing, uh, I knew that I wanted Johnny because, you know, I had to write, okay. Some of the boys that I, I knew, because I, I could get, I knew I could get a yes from him. So I kind of wrote Johnny's character, well, you know, kind of like Johnny. And then when I showed him the script just before the read for it, you know, he read it and then he's like, Sonny, do you really want me to play this guy? I said, like, what's wrong with it? I said, like, oh, is there anything? I said, like, do you guys think it's cultural or is it uh, pack mentality? Mm. Mm. Big question. <laughs> you know, straight off the bat, maybe it's a bit of both. You know, like <clears throat> I was thinking about the character that I played in there, Pete. You know, it's um, he was a ladies' man, uh, but it's not one of those. And I wanted to play it, you know, not the way that has been seen. Fangali come on, cheesy line, the cheesy look. But look, come on. He was just, he had the natural thing with the ladies. He wasn't even trying particularly hard. If Bawa, that was his. And so, like you said, so it, in that case, it's a little bit of pack mentality. He was expected to pick up the girl and he was expected by the boys. And so a lot of it was like, oh, yeah, you know, when, when, when he goes, Sonny, what happened, man? You know, it's like, if he's not feeling it tonight, it's not, you know, he doesn't want to play the game tonight. Mm. And okay, yeah, well, all of a sudden, the also has gone, Sonny, what's... What's wrong with you, man? And then that's that kind of conversation, that stuff is happening in the movie. You know, but um I, I wrote it that way. It's like, well, some of these guys, you know, because they don't sit down, but some of them don't sit down and analyze their lives. Like, they just fall into these roles, you know? And I guess, you know, that is a bit of pack mentality. So silly. You're supposed to be this guy, you're the tough guy, and it's like, okay, cool. It's all and that's it, right? And that's and it. When and the it's boys like, get together. Yeah. Okay. You play your part. Yeah, like, yeah, and yeah. sometimes, you know, the player just wants to just sell it. I just want to sit down and just play chess with you. Also, I just want to play cards with you. And not look at the girls and, you know, do my whatever that is. And the, the, the you know, the weird guy doesn't want to be weird tonight. Maybe he wants to be the cool guy tonight. And it's like, sorry, but you tell me, do you think go dance, you're funny. Go take your shirt off. And yeah. all of a sudden, it's like, five for And yeah. what, like, that's... I saw that. Behaving to the expectation, yeah. needed culture. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's now it's, that's it's, the norm. When yeah. we get together, yeah. that's yeah. the norm. Yeah. And those are the worst ones. Let's do it for the horses. And yeah. all of a sudden, it's like roping uh, in. It's like, uh, uh, so is this uh, a culture uh, thing? Yeah. Like, yeah. Am I supposed to also? <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, so it's a little bit of, you know, and it's like, it's a mind because, you know, after, during the whole movie, sort of, I've learned so much. Mm. 
you know, and mm. I didn't, I didn't know that was going to happen, but so like, I'm still learning today. I'm learning tonight, you know, and that's a cool thing for myself and, you know, for um, the guys who are part of the film. It's like, so it's uh, ongoing and it'll be good to sort of look at it five years from now. I say, like, oh, what did, you know, where did we go? How did it go? And did I have anything right back then or was it just, I'm not sure, but that's, I think that's a good, well, we're having these discussions about it, so it's you know it's in the right. Uh, we're heading in the right direction, I think. You know, it's it's real hard to kind of say if it's pack mentality or culture because, and I'll just say just from my own experience, um, I think we grew up in a household where we were taken to a brand new country. We left New Zealand, taken over to Australia, which is totally different. You didn't see many brown faces at all. So, you, you know, we we're dealing with other cultures and having to learn their ways of life. And then all we actually um, looked forward to, I guess, was just the weekends when we were able to go and catch up with our cousins. And obviously, mom and dad got to catch up with their brothers and sisters and it was just barky for the whole weekend. Mm. I don't think we've ever actually been shown away like that to say, oh, it's all right, you can just have two drinks and just go. You know? mm. It was never like that. It was, yeah. you know, if you don't drink, then you stay and you're just sober driver. <laughs> you know, yeah. you just, you, so you're drinking because you don't want to be sober driver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and have you yeah. ever sober driven in your whole life? <laughs> I, I sober <laughs> drive now. I sober <laughs> drive now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, no, man, I'm all good, good now. <laughs> 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 but I, I just think um, it'd be good to try and break that because I'm seeing with my brothers and sisters now and how they're raising their kids, they're not, you know, barking like mum and dad mm. do, you know, so it'd be interesting to see how our young ones now kind of go out mm. with seeing how we've actually um, come through, I guess, two generations to kind of yeah. get it to this point and and by the way, me it. asking these questions doesn't mean that I'm a better man than you. It's just questions that are there, you know what I mean? No, it's, a good, it's, it's somebody, pretty cool. It's a pretty... ask me. Yeah, at, yeah. At, at the well, I, I didn't actually think of it yeah. um, like that before. But yeah, um, yeah I always, when I ever did go out with my boys, I always kind of knew what role I had to play that night, you know? I always knew there was a certain expectation. Um, you know, go out and always be the last man standing, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, Should just be yeah. <laughs> so that's that it. However, you, if you're crying, you, hey, you can move. You're still good. <laughs> Which boys are these? Was this your brown boys or was this your pangi boys? Which one? When you're in Australia, was it your Aussie mates or? That's not just all the boys. Oh, and the mix. You're multicultural over there. I know a lot of my self validation growing up was like the the more drunk you can drive. Like it was like a badge yeah. of honor. Like yeah. that was the validation system. Like yeah. you guys, I'm a better drunk driver than you guys. I know how to drive from here to there. Never get caught. Like if you didn't get caught from the cops, yeah. or you know, bite on the uh, on the coins when the yeah. police stuff comes. All of those little things. Like that was a badge of honor. Looking back at it now, like because it makes you kind of think, damn, should I, should we really. Yeah. But I mean, at the end of the day, right? By the pack. Being in the hood, you know, uh, making a name means the one who took the most risk. And doesn't necessarily mean you're the one that got away, but you're the one that took the most risk. Mm. And the size of the risk that you took also reflected the size of the cojones you carried. Mm. And when those things grow up together, they just, you know, man, mm. you know. And you grow up in an environment where there's a lot of guys that were known for that, then they moved on. But that's the kind of uh, Robin Hood that you hear of. And so, you know, um, you know, they always say that foolishness is a product life cycle. There's always someone there to wear the hat when one moves on, mm. because it's a phase that it's part of everyone's growing up. Uh, there's always got to be that group where it's either they're all foolish and one good sheep, or they're all good sheep and one foolish one. So it's yeah. but someone will always wear that hat because, hey man, um, someone's gonna yeah. tell the story, and you know what I mean. So mm. my, well, I have a brother who's younger than me by a year, and I got another brother who's younger than me, you know, f three or four years and another brother older than me, four years. And for Ngali, when I was just starting, um, you know, in my, I started late, but then when I got started, so I went hard, you know. I was, 1920s is when I started because I went to 
for some reason, you know, um, I just started late. But then once I was in it, you know, when I was 20, my brother was 16 and you know, my little Kaisingis were 15, 14. And, you know, no, you know, you kind of had a little bit of a thought about it, but all of a sudden we've paved the way for them, you know, or whatever I was doing or whatever, you know, and me and my, and then my mates bring my mates and, and whoever I was hanging around with, all of a sudden said, these guys had no hope, you know, the little bro had no hope. It was like, drive, drive, drive. And then, well, when you're ready, then when you have younger cousins, then you can do the same thing, whatever. You know, same, same as in our family too, because, you know, well, we hope somebody said more, so when I came here, um, just through sheer luck, ended up on various songs and stuff like that, right? So when I went home, you know, that was like the pride of the village kind of thing. Yeah. And so the pressure came on to, uh, so wherever I went, I would take the name of the village. And then when you have drink ups, everyone expects you to be the guy to buy it. Oh. Oh. Um, so luckily, I learned a formula early on at that time, which you buy one big bottle and a bucket of water and give it to them. Because if you were to buy a bottle for everyone, you'll be doing it for two days. And you probably just gave up any money that you had. Huh? And so that pressure in itself, um, it, it took me years to mature to understand that um, um, I'm not supposed to teach them what I've lived. I'm supposed to share them what I've learned. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, what I've lived is no parent would want to use that as an example to their child. Yeah. And so I had to change because I, I was showing them like how I was drinking. You know, the New Zealand life, man. <laughs> I realized... Um, Actually, nobody wants to hear what I've just done. They would like to hear after I've fallen and risen up from the dead and just tell their kids, don't do it. Uh, but it's a bit hypocritical. Because you know, Samoans, the minute you tell them not to do it, they'd be like, sure, Dad. I wonder why. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to smoke a little bit just to see what Dad was on. Secure me, Aku. When when the d director yells, you know we're about to record. Like, how does it? How is it for actors when you've got committing to video? I mean, look, I, I don't even know if I've got. <laughs> I don't even know if I can comment. I mean, I just I just came here to listen to you guys and eat the popcorn like they say, <laughs> like the memes. Um, look, my, my my character is how I come off on the things that I do. I the only thing that people know me through is um. That scene in that movie. You know, crazy thing is I've never seen that movie. Because after I filmed my scene, we left a week after when we moved to Dubai, right? So the only thing I've ever seen for eight years was my face, and people would tag it against New South Wales when they played, <laughs> which wow. makes it even worse because... Uh, oh, yeah, man, you know. Wow. Of course, and, New South Wales. Was, <laughs> hey, hey, man, it was the hardest part because that's my team. And then, uh, But I've never seen the movie. And I think when we came home, uh, last year, I just refused to see it because I got tired of seeing that scene for eight years. Um, but for me, I don't really have a process. Um, I'll just learn about what the character is about, and then I'll try and produce 50 takes in my head or, or something like that. Uh, um, because the only form of acting that I've done that on the film it would be that one, and then most of it would be the freestyle stuff we did for Fresh. And that was based on how many times we could say the same thing um, in a different row, you know. And I was a salesman, and I knew that at different houses, I was selling vacuum cleaners. Wow. And so I knew for a fact what I'm selling in Danny Murrow and what I'm selling in Papa Toy, my character had to be different, yeah. right? I have to wear a tie when I come and knock on the Korean doors yeah, and pretend to be the smallest man in the universe because <laughs> most, like, most likely the door will be Korean. And the minute they see a brown man with a suitcase, they think drugs or police. Uh, if I go to Papa Toy, I'll take off my tie because I know that I'll look too formal and my people will look at me as a scammer. Yeah. And so through selling these various things, I learned to produce various yeah. characters. Well, if I'm an actor, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Before I ever got to know what that meant, all right? Um, but that's what it was. Yeah. And so when it came to being in front of camera, I've honed this ability to just produce. I, I could do 50 takes all at once different angles, I can change accents. It's, it was because I was, a, when I became into the actor, I'm not even an actor, but when I came into that space where I need to perform to eat, I needed to have options because I was hungry. You know, we, I went for three years while I was doing theater here in Nelson where I had to play different characters. 
And there were roles written for brown people, but I used to get roles that were more comedic than it was for an ethnic person. Because I had to play, you know what I mean? Like I had to challenge myself. So for me, I don't, I don't really have a process. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just when I get to understand a story and the director would say, look, this guy, or I was just about to say, or this girl. <clears throat> Because that would really change things. Um, but, you know, uh, this is what this is the desired outcome of the role. Yeah. And then in my head, I would go fishing for which personality of Alpha's 1,000 weird characters that should never be seen by human eyes um, <laughs> can, I, can I put forward, you know? Um, I'm a corporate host, right? I MC company parties. I've emceed uh, corporate parties all over the Middle East, in London, um, and where I would go from a top 40 concert. Uh, hosting a concert into turning up and hosting a Christmas party for a top 500 S&P company. And so I'm like, of course, you know, I had to change accents, you know, uh, but I had fun because I, I realized that I'm a character. Mm. And so because my wife used to be like, why the hell did you sound American on that one? I'm like, well, um, in Korea, for instance, if you speak normal English, they will not understand you because their English norm is American English. Uh, so when I used to teach English, it's like, oh, my, uh, uh, Michael went to the store, and everyone's like, uh. so Michael got up in the morning, and he went down to the store. He bought four packets, and how many did he left with? Ah, teacher, very good. <laughs> you know what I mean? So for me, life was the one yeah. that taught me how to oh, develop man. characters. The man, it was, um... Oh, I got a lot of respect for, you know, like... Um, you know, presenters, you know, like self MC Meth being up because, you know, for me, so like, I'm pretty I'm pretty shy, yeah. So um my acting is sort of like <clears throat> I, I gotta be in it here. I gotta be in it with the Ushu here. Like if I can just like imagine and be in this world here, I'm out well. Like if I'm if, like if it's a brother scene, I'm talking to my brother and the camera just happens to be here, you know what I mean? And whatever we got going on is what because you know, like being shy and all that. If I if I get to think about the cameras, if I'm worried about my performance, and then I've learned to sort of like, you know, whatever comes out. If I if I'm honest in that situation, then it's gonna be all good. You know, it was my best best um, you know uh, performance. It was not really performance because I'm trying to be honest in the, in the scene. Mm. And if that happens, then it's gonna be all good. You know, and that's why because when we're shooting the movie. Um, Everyone's going, Solid, did you have a look at, you know, did it look good? I was like, nah, it's, let's roll on, you know, because it's like, if I was honest with whoever I was with, then it's going to be all good, you know, because I'm being real. And that's what I wanted to get. And, uh, you know, but like I could never present, man. I could never do what you do, you know. Um, so I got a lot of respect for that. Um, but that's my trick of getting through the acting thing is like I'm trying not to act. You know, if it's love, then I love you. Mm. If it's I want to fuss you, then you know you and me got beef, whoosh, you know whatever. How how special was that scene with uh, Etiwati the, when he apologized? Yeah. I thought that was such a moving yeah. scene. Like it encapsulates a lot of like a lot of what you guys are talking about as yeah. fathers. You know that whole thing about apologizing to our kids if we didn't yeah. set it right, mm. but. Yeah. When that that look, that was a special scene. You could tell there was a special moment. Like, how was that scene yeah. for you with with him? Um, you know, I gotta give props to the man. You know, um, because like I said, I wrote the, the 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 scenes and stuff. But then, what he brought to the table as well was like, so he brought his experience and and he's a father as well. And it's like, okay, and we just it was a quick little discussion outside. It's like, well. Oh, you know, um, are we all good at the scene, you know, Eti, you know, and, uh, you know, directing him was already a privilege and I was like, I'm trying to just keep it cool and um, do my job. And then he, he, he come up and he goes, you know, well, if I'm, you know, Hans, if I'm just tracking back what the scene's about, you know, he, you know, um, the last time he saw his son before he went missing, um, well, you know, he was trying to rush off to a date, you know, and he just kind of brushed off his son. And I'm thinking that, you know, maybe he, um, you know, he's worried about his son. I was like, I go, Master, you know, I go, sir, if that's what you're feeling in the scene, and let's, let's roll and we'll see how it goes. And so it was written one way, and then the way the scene come out, 
So it was a whole different, and we just went with it, you know, because it was real for him. And then when he brought that in, you know, I had nothing, I had nothing but to react to what he was giving me. And, um, you know, like I said, because it reminds me of my dad, you know, it's like hard, hard, hard through most of my life. And then me and my dad now, awesome relationship, you know, he's my, he's my drinking buddy, basically. But prior to that, it's like, you know, it was, it was, it's basically that scene, like, oh, it's hard to talk to your dad. And um, so to happen, in, to, for that to happen in the movie, I was like, oh, again, it's like you're trying to do your job, but it's like, you know, you can't help but, but be affected by it as well, like as I was doing it. But um, he's such a giving actor, man. Such a good, and a, you know, he's um, a humble man and I'm really grateful for him being a part of the film. And, I learned so much from him as well. I mean, and it, it, it's actually harder because, you know, we're from a community of uh, people that we don't talk, we don't share, and people are only supposed to know how great the family is. Yeah. Uh, we're only supposed to celebrate the things in the light, yeah. things that belong in the darkness. That's a hush hush conversation. Yeah. Just pulls it out. Yeah. I mean, you're so, right, we're so conservative. Uh, of course. Man. It'll be hard for our parents to watch something like this because they know it's yeah. true, but yeah. they don't want to. Yeah. I don't know. I don't want to know that yeah. it exists. So that's why I was like, hearing your story now and how you're explaining how the film came about, um, I think there's a, there's an element of the movie being ahead of itself. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. you you broke yeah. some taboos there. Yeah. yeah. Kambanga yeah, you can talk yeah, about yeah. this sort of stuff. Yeah. Now, do you see why? So I I must have just been like, you know, lost or something because. I thought I thought we were ready. I thought, you know, I was like, well, we're ready for it, you know, 2019. It's like, and, uh, you know, there's a bit of humor in there that we could, could have, uh, you know, so but they want to come out. I was like, oh, maybe you I was in trouble, man. You guys got me in trouble, oops, right? Because during that first week, yeah. I told all of my cousins in Australia, oh, hey, uh, it's a family movie, oh, guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, three yeah. of my girl cousins took the mom and dad to see the film. Uh, next thing you know, I was like, how was it? Mom said that the next time you're coming over to Australia, she's going to give you a hiding. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, that's one of those things. I think at the end of the day, it's your story to tell, right? So you were ready. The people may not have been. But I think uh, there is a, you, you always have to look at things happen for a reason. Uh, you definitely were given a chance to drop a coin um, so that the next person that's going to tell a revealing and upfront story uh, will probably uh, learn a lot of things, how to tell it in a different manner. But what you guys have done is you were honest to your story. I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the way it was told, hey, it's out now. Yeah. Uh, so it's just about um, what are we all learning from it, you know. Yeah. For me, it was learning to not prejudge something um, before seeing it. Um, yeah, so that's, that's my biggest lesson from it. Because I'm, I'm a person, I love films, man. So when I saw that, and now that I'm a father to a girl, <laughs> you know, all of these things play a role in it. So, but yeah, that, I mean, that, that were my own uh, personal prejudging that I should not apply to the film. But, you know, we live in a real world, right? Yeah, sure. Thanks, so, bro. From Soraya Johnson, what advice would you give to your 18-year-old selves? Johnny? Oh, um, my 18-year-old self, I'd probably just sit there and actually tell him, to just really just go with what you're actually thinking. Don't try and follow another one's, anyone else's path. Um, you've got your own path to carve out. Yeah. See, my 18 year old self had a lot of identity crisis. And a lot of the stuff that I did was based on trying to be the man because there was a man that I had a picture of that if I became that person, uh, I'm, I would have made it. Uh. And so a lot of the silly stuff that I did and a lot of the things that I did do were all based on trying to build this character. But what I realize now is what I do doesn't define who I am. Yeah. All right. So, and because I now understand that, I've now pre-selected my circle of friends to represent those who do life exactly like I do. So I've got boys that we do this, but we, when we do this, it's filled with milk bottles. Uh, you know what I mean? But the, the elevation is different and the reason of coming together is different. I would never um, uh, regret my 18-year-old self in his journey. 
because if he didn't do those silly things, I wouldn't know what I know now. But the one thing I will tell him is, um, is identity was, was such a thing for me. Yeah. Like my identity is that I'm the son of the Most High God and that I'm Samoan and my parents loved me. But because it wasn't communicated in the satisfactory way my 18-year-old self was, I had to go looking. And so therefore, I acquired friends that represented things I wanted to become that were never good for my, for my environment. But I, that was the sacrifice I made because the picture of the person I wanted to become was reflected in the circles that I selected. And I didn't know what I wanted to do either. So to my 18-year-old self, keep doing what you're doing, but just remember that you'll be okay. Because at that time, man, at 18 years old, I thought if I don't make it this year, I am no one. Oh. Wow. Yeah. And, and what happened was because I was after that hunger, the 18-year-old guy stayed 18 at 19, at 20, at 21. He was still 18 because the eyes of that unsatisfied mind remained. You know, girls. Oh, if I get more girls. Okay. Oh, if I get more skinny girls. Uh, if, I, if, I, if I get a girl that um, doesn't have twin numbers to my weight when we're on the scale, I'm the man, <laughs> you know, because, you know, that, that's how it was. Uh, you know what I mean? They're going to be like, okay, this is the man. It's like shallow hell, really? Um, you know, when I was 18, I think I was, you know, I was dealing with probably heartbreak at that time, you know, and maybe, maybe that filtered into the, the rest of my, you know, the next few years, but... I would say reach reach out and talk to somebody, you know, um, brothers or even your brothers, you know, mm -hmm. your your brothers, your own blood, you know, and even even with them, you can feel like, oh, he's gonna think that I'm a, mm -hmm. you know, if I don't, if I, so I gotta be tough it out and not, but reach out and talk to a brother, a friend, whoever you can talk to, um, and then also like. <clears throat> You know, look into to like for that heartbreak. Look into that heartbreak and see, you know, what's mm. explore more. Don't keep it to yourself. Is what I'm trying to say. Don't keep it to yourself. You know, just to go on from there. I know for me the catalyst because I used to drink, drive hard, um, and there was falling asleep on exit 13. I still remember vividly going on the motorway and fell asleep and went straight for the pole. And for some reason, I woke up at, at that at that moment and I managed to swerve and then I knew at that point I had to stop drinking and driving but just in terms of you guys experiences around not for, we've been talking a lot about alcohol but just alcohol and driving like um, do you guys have any insights on that or stories around it because I know it took me that near close you know miss to kind of snap me out of it. I knew it was bad but it was just normal you know but I mean, it took me like, forever to to stop I grew up in Samoa, man, you know. We used to have a sign in front of Malua back in the days that if you drink and drive, drive slowly, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you have to understand, back in the days in Samoa, um, the only where place you see cops is the area called Apia. So once you go past that for the rest of Samoa, <laughs> yeah. like, who the hell You're is going to... Yeah, bro. You know. And, 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 and the worst part about it in Samoa, if you have a car crash, that instead of coming to check if you're okay, they'll beat you up and take everything inside your car. So we, we, we drank drive because, again, that was the norm, right? And you don't ever want to crash because, first of all, um, you're going to get a hiding and you might lose your car. And some of them were even killed by the villagers for having a crash. Even though he crashed in a part of the village where it's just bush, that the only thing you heard was the feelings of the grass. You actually, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, then when I came to New Zealand, you know what's the craziest part? I had enough money to buy beers, but my brain said it's too much to book a taxi. But if I calculate the amount of money that night that I spent on drinking, I probably would have gone to town and back. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And so there was this mentality of lack of where I put the importance of spending my money. Definitely was not on a cab. So I, I did it here um, many times. It wasn't until um, I left New Zealand I was still doing it. For me, it was the love of a woman, you know. Um, my wife is very, she's a South Auckland born and raised, but very cookie cutter, straight to the point where we drank, we just don't drive. Um, so that's, that's where it stopped for me. And then when the kids came along, well, you know, <laughs> she's a no-no. And I come from a family who no one drinks. 
So, you know, you know how I told you that story about three, you know, all of them white sheep and one dark one now and then were, you know, and I was scared of my dad. I mean, I'm a grown ass man and I'm still scared of my dad. So, and he doesn't drink. So if, if, if I even go anywhere near there. So it was, it was more of a fear of um, acceptance in our house too, you know? Yeah. So that, for me, that was it. But man, I was, I was bad at it. Because coming from Samoa, that was a norm. They just, hey man, even in front of theological college where everyone go to become an angel, it just says just slow down. Mm-hmm. They didn't say drink, drive, stop. It just slowed down. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, if God accepted it, <laughs> hala. So. Well, for me, um, yeah, this is probably pretty, pretty actually recent, probably only just within maybe the last, probably just over about a year ago. Um, you know, usual thing, I was probably thinking I had a few drinks after work and it was the last day, you know, Christmas, last day, everybody sort of knocks off. I didn't think, um, I probably polished about maybe seven beers back, dropped in my car, I was just pretty much just going to drive home. Um, ended up getting pulled over on, I think it's uh, Dominion Road. Um, and I didn't think, you know, we were just going, we were still going through production on this. Um, Brown Boys, it was um, stupid. You know, I just, as soon as I finished with dealing with the cops, um, you know, I, I called up Hans um, and just said, you know, I was pretty upset. I was, you know, there was one thing I was, but I've just fucked up my whole career and then I've all my, also potentially just fucked up this film for my fucking also calling. And I was just like explaining what happened. Now, he's like, oh, it's like, well, so don't, don't panic, don't panic, you know, come pick you up. And it came pick me up. Um, I was just in a state because I didn't know, like, you know, I'm trying my best to help out my mate, fucking, you know, pump his film. And then I go and do something stupid like that. And I wasn't even thinking about the rolling effect. I was still in that mode on like, you know, I'll take a risk because I got big kahunas. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, you know, things are good. Yeah, like just like fucking part of the kick-ass film and then fucking idiot, you know. So um, that was a pretty um, eye-opener and that was pretty much me just realizing, you know, um, God's been giving me so many chances. And he's like, that was the one that I just saw, you know, he's like, son, I will take this all away. I know you've worked so hard to get to this point and I will take it away if you carry on. Wow. Um, so, yeah, um, you know, I checked myself in rehab. It was pretty hard. It was pretty hard. I'm um, just sitting there amongst the room. I, I hated it. I hated every minute of it because once again, it just brought up all these other issues on what led me to drinking in the first place, you know, um, you know, self-doubt, not feeling like you're enough, um, just your upbringing, you know, all these things um, come into play. Um, that's what happens in rehab. You, you have to sit there and you have, you're forced to actually um, just look at these issues. And then you also sit next to someone else and someone else and, you know, when they start engaging in conversation, you start to realize, okay, shit, you know, it's all right. Um, I'm not the only one who feels like this because I don't, well, I don't, I don't know about anybody else, but I'd like to think, you know, our young ones can talk about, you know, these kind of thoughts and emotions and that lead up to making stupid decisions like that. Um, that was probably, um, yeah, the eye opener with my drinking and driving and why I don't do it anymore. And, Actually, I, I've kind of learned to just not want to drink. Well, I'm learning how to socialize now without drinking. Um, so that's, that's a bit new. Um, but apart from that, um, yeah, just don't have any urges to like, you know, drink. And then I kind of know how to pick and choose my times. Mm. Yeah. Very sure, man. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Uh, I'm lucky now that <clears throat> one of my, my boys is an Uber driver, an actual Uber driver. It's got more Henry than us out. <laughs> so I'm lucky now and it's good now you know the, the, the Ubers are cheap and you know but um, other than that it was I guess it's still you know still a problem when you jump into the car valley to the car um, and your boy's over and you know he's over and he's like oh yeah yeah and you know, you know so I've jumped in a lot of 
times, you know, when the horse is doing this thing and it's like, it's only, well, well, yeah, it's like, okay, where are we going, bro? <laughs> and it's like, um, who's the master? Yeah, it's like, um, <laughs> but even then, I remember <laughs> being like, you know, like, yeah, it's all good, but you're still a bit, sorry, I'm a bit scared, man. You know, but again, you never go, sorry, what about we call your gang here or call somebody to drop us, man, or... But again, it's, so it's still kind of in the same, you, you're just, you know, you're just at, at fault here. Because we all, we all know that nobody should know, you know, but um, I'm so happy that, you know, it's a lot better now, you know, that we can, silly. Like now, I think a lot of the boys know that, yeah. what are you up to, bro? Yeah. Relax, you know, it's, it's better now, but, you know, well, I guess it's good we're having these converse because we want it to, to get even better. Oh. Yeah. So. Just the... Uh, Wrap up all the online questions yeah. from the mother of four South Auckland boys. How can we help our Pacific young men to understand their limits around alcohol? Look, I think my take on it is very simple. Um, this is part of what I currently now do, right? So I do this thing where we call it the tree planting ministry. And it's about doing things today that you will never see the output of. And when you're comfortable about putting things, putting work that you will never see the fruit of, um, wall starts to fall down. So what does that mean? It means that um, there are a lot of ideas that I give away for free because they may come through me, but it's not for me to execute. And I'm okay if someone else were to make a living out of it, right? Because, you know, to be a blessing, um, to, to be blessed, you have to be a blessing first and foremost. But see, a lot of these issues that come up in our society, like, like drinking, like like sex and all of these things, um, they, they grow in darkness because we never bring it to light. So whatever issue it is that your kids are going through, um, we in our Pacific community, we like to react, but we never preempt. We've seen the results of when we bring sex into the conversation earlier before our kids get active, right? Yeah. And I know it's a taboo subject, right? But um, one of the craziest part is before the missionaries came, sex and all of these yeah. parting were common conversations in our people. But when they came and put the taboo on it, all of a sudden we weren't even allowed to talk about fingernails. Yeah. You know what I mean? So reality is um, do not let the world teach your kids about anything. You have to, it has to be come from home, right? I've got this big thing about the first source of information to anything your children needs to know has to come from you. Because if the teacher is the first source of knowledge for sex, when mom and dad say something, you are going to be secondary knowledge. And the far more more or the expertise will be given to someone else. Mm. And then when you raise your voice to an issue, you will not be taken as seriously as the world would say. Mm. So alcohol, bring it into the light. Mm. They live in a foreign land. And in this foreign land, there are cultures and exposures that we cannot control. Right? Our kids nowadays, starting from middle school, they spend more time in the world than they do at home. Yeah. And kids these days are so fast at learning things that our parents only learned off it at 50. You know, we still have parents who don't speak a lot of English, but I've been here since the 70s. It's because we've always gone to work with our community, go to church with our community, go play poker with our community. Mm -hmm. And as a result, they justify that as life. Now, we are in a generation where we all have a friend or two from a different culture. And we've all got friends who've been through issues that have never been conversated in our homes. And when they do happen in our homes, it's very in a very thin layer discussion. Mm -hmm. So to this mother of four kids, whatever it is that you want to equip your, your sons with, if you want to equip them to be good men, start talking about what good men is. Good men is not defined by actions, it's defined by what comes out of the heart. And the only reason that those boys will have good omens in their hearts is you have to plant it. Tell them about what good men is. Tell them about what good life is. Tell them about sex. Tell them about alcohol. You know, because at the end of the day, they are going to be out of your house longer than they will be in your muftana. But if your core is where every knowledge comes from, you are going to be the source that they come back to when life gets hard. You know, so that, that's... That's gonna be <laughs> good, <Whatever. man. laughs> hey, hey man. You know, um, I got to learn these lessons the hard way. And now that I'm a father, I started fathering as how my father fathered me. Until I realized I my I, my kids were born in the Middle East. 
that is a whole nother level of mismatched culture. The way my dad raised me, it would never have worked for my kids in Dubai. Mm. And if I love my kids, I'm going to have to find the tune to sing their song, not mine, because it's their future. I'm not going to be there. So I, I, I can't tell them what works, right? Because it's what works for 2019 where dad's the man and their babies. They're going to be men and women soon. And the tune to make it is going to be different than mine. But if I build a core of being a good human, making good decisions, and be open about everything, that's the best I can do for them. I'm not going to guarantee they'll be okay because I won't be there to see it. But at least there is a platform that they can start from. So that's what I would she, I wouldn't tell her what to do because she's a mother of four, which means she's already a super warrior. Yeah. <laughs> you know? um, and any mother is super warrior of any house. But I can only share that um, it has to start from the house. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of us, uh, we wait for uh, the, the daughter to get pregnant to have the conversation. A bit too late for that. Yeah. The only conversation you should have now is how to be a good mother. Mm-hmm. Uh, but bring things into the light, man, and tell them in life, you can wait. And if somebody comes up, and also when it comes to defining what a woman should be for them, mm, mm. define that. Yeah. Then stick to that. Mm. Oh, when a woman is loyal, who's blah, blah, blah. Good, man. Because before you get to find that one, there will be other siaulas in between to take you away from the one that you think you're going to have. <laughs> now, are you strong enough? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, man, that's, that's my five cents. Talk way too much. Yeah. Right. Trying to get into the next movie of Hans. <laughs> <laughs> How hard it is to write a film, get it directed. I mean, you have director, actor, and then I can only imagine the production things you have to do to service it to industry, get it in cinemas. And how how do you end up on the back of a plane seat like that? Yeah. That's huge. That you've got international people flying in the sky watching your piece of art. So, to our creative community out there, that like, what's some practical advice and tips for? Those are also wanting to get into the fields of, of work that you guys do. Right now, the internet's solid. That's the best thing out, you know. So you can learn anything on the internet. So if you're one of those people that can discipline yourself to watch YouTube clips and do that, if you need, if you're more used to the to the class environment, then find a good film school to join. Um, you know, but even solid, I, I would say reach out to any, you know, reach out to the film crews and all that if that's what you want to. You know, to join in, and just you, you don't don't underestimate, you know, people wanting to help out. You know, I mean, come and come and yeah. grab me from the street if you want to talk about acting or, or anything, writing or any anything, man. Um, I'll help you out. You know, as shy as I am, bro, because uh, I want the I want the the, the 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 industry to grow, especially for our people. It's you know, it's hard enough as it is. You know, so I'm helpful. Most of the people are, you know, very, very helpful. So um, be brave. Come and talk, you know. Join a school. Do whatever whatever suits you, you know, because I think everybody's individual. But um, no advice. Huh? That's my advice. Oh. If you want to be notified every time we drop a new video, hit subscribe and ring the bell. Cheers.